All right, so today we're gonna start chapter five. Um, lesson one is on angles. Now, the angles are gonna be different from what we drew in geometry. In geometry, you had acute, obtuse, right, straight. Our angles um, for this chapter are gonna be drawn in the XY plane. And they're gonna be really large. Like we might be drawing an angle that's 210 degrees, 300 degrees, 500, um, or even negative degrees. So what we're gonna be doing is they're gonna look like concentric circles or like bullseyes. We're gonna be uh, swirling around to create these graphs. So let's go ahead. This is an XY plane or a coordinate plane. Now, when our X axis over here and our Y axis intersect, these are perpendicular lines. So if you realize that right here, this would form a 90 degree angle, you can see up here at the top is 90 degrees. Over here, when we start to draw our angles, we'll start over here along the X axis, and this would be zero degrees. Now, if I were to draw all the way around, it would form a full circle, and it's also represented as 360. <clears throat> so this first ray that I've drawn in here, this red line, or this red ray, is called the initial side of our angle. The other part of our angle, our stopping point, this is called the terminal side. So if I were to start here on the term on the initial side and draw my angle around, this could represent, it looks like it's an obtuse angle. I went 90 degrees and then I went a little bit more. So I'm gonna say this looks like about 150 degrees. So you start on the initial side and you stop on the terminal side. The arrow on this arrow is, or the arrow on the angle is important. It tells us the direction. When I draw my angle, if I go counterclockwise, like I just did, it's a positive angle. If I were to go counterclockwise, start here at the initial and go around 90, 180, and then a little bit more, this would indicate a negative angle. I'm still starting on the initial side, but I'm start stopping on the terminal side of that ray underneath it. Notice that the arrow here will indicate which way the angle went. This down. So when you're moving clockwise to create your angle, it's gonna create a negative angle. When you go counterclockwise, this would make a positive angle. These are gonna look like bullseyes or concentric circles. Now, notice on my axis, on each one of them, I've labeled 0, 90, 180, 270, and then if I went full circle, it's 360. If I'm going backwards and creating the negative angle, if I'm going clockwise, this would be negative 90 down here. Do this in green. This would be negative 90, negative 180 also, negative 270, and then this could also be negative 360. And again, the direction of your arrow is gonna indicate if it's positive or negative, and then the movement clockwise or counterclockwise. So again, our initial side is that x-axis. So let's say I wanna draw in here a negative 30 degree angle. So again, I'm not gonna get out a protractor, I'm just gonna estimate where it should be. So again, if you remember, each one of these are 90 degrees. And halfway, if you were to draw your ray halfway through, it would be about 45. So if I wanted a negative 30 degree angle, I could say it's probably about here. Negative is gonna go clockwise. 
and then you move and your arrow will be hitting the terminal side. So again, this is your terminal side of your angle. It's your stopping point. A negative sign in front of that 30. This is a negative 30 degree angle. Now we're gonna do one that's greater than 360. So we're gonna go around more than once and then go a little bit more. So on this one, let's graph a 400 degree angle. It's positive, so I'm gonna go counterclockwise. So I'm gonna start here on my initial side. I'm gonna go around one full circle. So that was 360. So if I subtract that, this tells me I still gotta go 40 degrees more to finally finish off my angle. So if I draw in a ray, and then I go take this a little bit more, this would be my 400 degree angle. So just remember how you can inch it up and go. Yes? I don't think you're the last 40. The last 40? So I know when I went around my axis here, full circle is 360. So if I'm trying to get to 400, I've already gone 360, so I just subtract that, and I know I need to go 40 more. Oh, you just keep going. Where does the ray come from then? The ray is your stopping point. You draw it in there. Oh. You have to figure out how big to make it. So if I needed to go another 40 degrees, then that's where I put my ray, my terminal side. Like this would be 40 degrees right here. So 360 plus 40 gives me 400. So the, all that swirl is the whole 400 degree angle. So like if I wanted to just draw, I could say this green one, I could say is 40 degrees. But the red one going around one full circle and then the little green portion would be the 400. All right, next thing we're gonna talk about are terminal angles. Now, in order to find a coterminal angle, all we have to do is add 360 or subtract 360. And that will give us an angle that is coterminal to the given angle that we start with. Now, a lot of times the question are gonna say, give a positive coterminal angle and give a negative coterminal angle. Now, sometimes your numbers are going to be really large, and to get to that negative coterminal angle, you'll have to subtract 360 more than once. Um, so let's try this first one. We're going to start with 30 degrees. So you're going to be given an angle, and they're going to ask you to find a coterminal angle to the 30 degrees. So if I wanted to find a positive coterminal angle, I will take 30 degrees and I will add 360. It's always add or subtract 360. So my positive coterminal angle to 30 degrees would be 390. Now, all of these coterminal angles are gonna start and stop on the same rays. So if I draw my initial, and I draw in the 30 degrees, this would be my initial angle that is given to me. Now if I wanted 390, I'm going to go full circle, 360 plus 30 more. And the blue would be the 390. Now if I wanted a negative coterminal angle, I'm going to take that 30 and I'm going to subtract 360. So 360 minus 30, keep flip change here. So this gives me negative 330. So again, the direction is important. Okay, so for the negative 330, this time I'm going clockwise. I'm starting on the same initial side. I'm gonna go around 90, 180, 270, and then a little bit more. And I stop on that same terminal side, but it's on the other side of it. So I still stop on the same ray that's the terminal side. 
So the green would be the 30, th negative 330 degree angle. Again, all three angles, when they're coterminal or however many you want to draw, all start on the same initial side and all stop on the same terminal side. Yes? They do start on the same thing. So let's see. So for the red one, it's starting right here, yeah. and it's going up 30 degrees. Uh -huh. Then for the blue one, it's starting right here. It's going around 90, 180, 270, 360, and then it needs to go a little bit more, 30 more degrees, to get to 290. Then for the green... I'm starting here, same initial side. I'm going negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and then I stop here at negative 330. Yes? So for initial side or the terminal side, they don't have to be in the same place, just the same side? It's just got to be the same ray. Okay. So the initial ray is on the axis, and the terminal is where you've put your first angle. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's the ray, basically. It's not it's like the side of the angle, but it's a ray. All right, so this one, I'm gonna still do my same 30 degree angle. Um, but this time I want two positive coterminal angles. So here you could show zero, 90, 180, 270. This is also 360. So if I want two positive coterminal angles, again, I'm going to estimate where the 30 degrees is. So here's my 30. And now to find another positive coterminal angle, I'm going to take that 30, I'm going to add 360, and I get 390. So I would come around, 360 plus another 30. Then if I wanted another positive coterminal angle, I'm going to add 360 again, and I get 750. So what I would do here is go around two full circles, 360, 360 again, and then stop on the terminal side. Yes. Good? So you're just swirling around. If I ask you to give me two positive coterminal angles, the first one would be the blue one, because I got to that just by adding 360. If I want another positive coterminal angle, I need to add 360 again. So when I go to draw a 750 degree angle, I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna go around. 360 degrees. I'm going to go around again, another 360, so now I'm at 720, and then I got to go 30 degrees more, and that makes 750. In the homework, it doesn't ask you to draw them, but you might want to practice drawing them because you will have to draw an angle on the quiz next week. Um, you're just going to swirl around and make the angles, and again, you'll approximate where you're going to put that terminal side. All right, so on the next few examples, without drawing them, they just want us to find a positive and a negative coterminal angle, given an angle. So for example, 908. Now, to get to the negative coterminal angle, I'm gonna have to subtract 360 more than once. Does that make sense? Now, to get to a positive coterminal angle, I can still add the 360, or I could subtract it because it's still going to give me a positive angle. Does that make sense? So a negative angle isn't just the 360, that's the negative number? Yeah, so the answer has to be negative. So for example, if I wanted a positive coterminal angle, if that's all the question asked and you didn't want to have to worry about subtracting, I could do 908 plus 360 and this gives me a positive coterminal angle. 
However, watch what happens when I subtract 360 to try to get my negative coterminal angle. Notice 908 is way too big. Just subtracting 1, 360, is only going to give me 548. So my coterminal angle here, this answer is still positive. So this could have been my answer. I didn't have to actually add. So when it asks for a positive coterminal angle, the answer has to be a positive angle. So now to get to the negative, I got to subtract 360 again. So I'm going to take my answer, subtract 360, and I get 188. I'm still not there yet. Yes? So you don't do 360 minus 908. You have to do it like what, how you're doing it right now. You just got to have to keep subtracting 360 from 908. So you could have done this. You could have done 908 minus 360 and then got that answer or just keep subtracting 360 from 908. But you got to keep doing it repeatedly. I already did it once and I got the 548. Oh, okay. If you want to think of it that way, absolutely. But you're still going to subtract because the signs are different. Does that make sense? All right. So now I got to do it one more time because I still don't have a negative coterminal angle here. So I'm going to do 188 minus 360. And now I finally get my negative coterminal angle. So any one of these three could have been the positive coterminal angle, but to get to the negative, you actually had to subtract 360 more than once. I have negative 75. To find the positive coterminal angle, I'm going to take negative 75 and I'm going to add 360. And this gives me 285. To get the negative coterminal angle, I subtract 360. And I get negative 435. And that would be my positive and negative coterminal angles. Let's try the next one. Okay, so for the next one, Again, I want a positive and a negative coterminal. So negative 98 plus 360 gives me 262. Negative 98 minus 360 to get the negative coterminal, and I get negative 458. Just read the directions. It may ask for one of each. It may ask only for a positive or only for a negative or maybe even two positive. You just read the directions. But just remember you're adding and subtracting 360 degrees. Let's try the 203. So again, negative 203 plus 360, 157. Negative 203 minus 360, and I get negative 563. Next, again, same thing. So to find, now this one again, it's large. So I could find my positive by adding, and I get 1059. Or I could have also found a positive by subtracting. Because when I do 699 minus 360, I still have a positive coterminal angle. I haven't gotten to the negative yet. And now when I subtract it, now I'll get the negative coterminal. Okay, so prior to this lesson, whenever we measured degree or measured angles, it was just in degrees. Now we're going to get more precise. And our angle measures are going to be measured in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So just like when you're maybe timing something, maybe you're running a race. Um, you might want to say, like if you were running a mile and somebody says, oh, I run it in 10 minutes. And then somebody else says, well, I run it in 10 minutes and 5 seconds. Um, that would be a more precise time. So this is what we're doing here with our degrees. It's just more precision. So it's more specific. 
So for example, with time, before I do this one, let's say I told you it's gonna take me three hours and 30 minutes to drive to Orlando. How could I convert that to decimal degrees? What would I do? How, what would that be in a, uh, not decimal degrees, what would that be in decimal form? This one. Three hours and 30 minutes. How much is 30 minutes out of an hour? Half. So you would divide it by 60. So to convert three hours and 30 minutes into part of an hour, this would be 3.5 hours. Everybody with me on that? We're gonna do the same thing here. So in this problem here, the first number with the little circle, this is the degrees. The one with the apostrophe, these are the minutes. And with the symbol that looks like a quotation, these are the seconds. Now, there is a button on your calculator that will do these conversions for you. However, by the time you hit all these little symbols, it's almost easier just to divide by 60 and 3,600. Um, so it's up to you. I'll show you where the buttons are. Um, you're going to, I believe, hit the... You'll hit the second key and then the apps button where it says angle and it'll open up the menu. But we're gonna learn how to do this by hand first. So if I wanted to convert this, also another thing you need to memorize is that 60, to 60 minutes is equal to one degree. And 3,600 seconds is also equivalent to one degree. These are going to be the numbers that we're going to be using in our conversions. So we're going to be dividing by 60 for the minutes. We're going to be dividing by 3,600 for the seconds. When we go the other way from decimal degrees into degrees, minutes, seconds, we'll be multiplying. So let's try this first example. It's on the next slide. We're going to convert this to decimal degrees. And the way that we do that is we're going to just rewrite the degrees. That will be the number in front of the decimal point. You're going to leave that as the whole number. We're going to take the minutes and we're going to divide that number by 60. Then we're going to take the seconds and we're going to divide that number by 3,600 and then add this. You can do this continuous in your calculator. What I would do is put these in parentheses. So I would do 74 plus 8 divided by 60, or key it in as a fraction, plus 14 divided by 3,600. Hit enter, and you should be getting 74.137 degrees. So I'm going to do 165 plus 51 divided by 60 plus 9 divided by 3,600 and I get approximately 165.853. So let's go the other way. Let's try to convert three and a half hours into hours and minutes. So how many minutes are in an hour? 60. So what I do is I take the, this decimal portion and I'm going to multiply it by 60 and that'll give me how much 0.5 hours are, which are 30 minutes. And then I just write the three. So this is just converting time. Now we're going to apply it to our angle measures. So when we want to convert our decimal degrees to minutes and seconds, the degree, the number in front of the decimal point, this is our degree, it stays. To get the minutes, I'm now going to take the decimal portion, 0.817, I'm gonna multiply that by 60. Once I do that, I get 49.02. The minutes are the whole number portion. So now I have 
49 minutes. And now to get the seconds, again, take the decimal portion and multiply it by 60. And I get 1.2. So 1.2 seconds. It's an apostrophe. When you're doing the homework, um, the example it says, refer to example three for the way to do this. They round their answers if you go to check it to a whole number. Um, the example in the book actually leaves it as the tenths place. So you can either round it to the tenths place or leave the seconds as the whole number. Let's try another one. So again, the 59, those are my degrees. So I'm going to write the 59. I'm now going to take the decimal portion and multiply it by 50, 60. And then I get 5.124. So that 5 becomes my minutes. And now to get the seconds, you're going to take the decimal portion multiply it by 60 again and I get 7.44 I'll round to the tenths so if you're checking your answer with the homework they're gonna write it as 59 degrees 5 minutes 7 seconds they're not gonna round their answer to the tenths place on the quiz just read the directions